How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be talking about the stuff that is illegal in the United States, but is legal around the rest of the world. And this really caught my eye because I figured it would have been like the complete opposite. I figured that we would have all the stuff that nobody else is allowed to eat because the preservatives that we put in our foods and like just the weird stuff that they think it's okay for us to eat um and you wonder why we don't live very long in the in america but that's another story for another day um but yeah so we're gonna be reacting to illegal in the u.s legal in the world by legal eagle so that's a fun name So yeah, if you guys have not checked him out, go check him out because he is a funny guy. And don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm just going to push play right now. Welcome to America, the freest country in the entire world, which we know is true because it's a thing that people say. And you might actually believe that until you try to build housing somewhere or drink alcohol in public. But unfortunately, America anyway. is not the freest country in the world. In fact, according to some, it's barely in the top 20 freest countries. But the world is a diverse place, and one country's freedom is another country's criminal violation. And there are wide swaths of activities that are perfectly normal in other countries, but also very, very illegal in America. So today, let's look at some international liberties that could get you fined or locked up if you tried them stateside. And some of these foreign freedoms may surprise you. But let's start with a truly evil and dastardly product, one that actually specifically targets children. I'm of course talking about Kinder Eggs. Now, we like to say that children are the future, and here in America, the moment we find out that something puts children in danger, legislators pull out all the stops to ensure that we try to keep our kids safe. And that's why America has stood firm to cracking down on a grave and terrible threat to children's health and safety posed by toy-filled chocolate eggs. Kin okay, actually, yeah, I kind of forgot about this one. But I did know this because I, Charlie actually got a Kinder egg in the mail from somewhere, from somebody. I'm not going to mention any names, but they actually had it in a, um, they put the Kinder egg in this little 3D thing that they had made specially for it. I thought it actually came with it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it had like a whole entire plastic container and it was like really fancy. But no, it was just hiding what was in it and uh yeah it was really good but what about the cracker jacks too i mean they always had the little the little toys in in the boxes they did quit doing that but i thought it was for financial reasons maybe not i don't know I don't even know what to say. Kinder Surprise eggs, which famously contain a yellow capsule, uh, which contains a small toy, have been a beloved staple for children around the world ever since the product's introduction in 1974 by Ferrero, an Italian company. And that's another thing. I just actually heard about these in the last five years, and they've been out forever, which is really weird, but... But in the United States, these toy-filled treats have been classified as dangerous illegal contraband. And some background. In 1938, the U.S. passed the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, which empowered government agencies to regulate food safety. And under consumer safety regulations issued by the FDA and the Consumer Product Safety Commission, the sale and distribution of any food with a, quote, non-nutritive object embedded is prohibited. And that includes toys found inside confectionery items. Now, although you can find Kinder Surprise eggs in Canada and Mexico, don't try to bring them into this country or you risk serious fines. No, no, no. In 2011, the U.S. Customs and Border Protection, the CBP, seized more than 60,000 Kinder eggs from travelers' baggage and international mail shipments. Oh, my more God. More than twice that number from 2010. <laughs> this caused the CBP to uh, issue a press release in 2012 warning people to try to stop sneaking chocolate eggs into the country. Quote, also known as Kinder eggs, these chocolate treats may be cute and seasonal, but they are too dangerous to children to be imported legally into the u.s why are they so popular so they're saying sixty thousand eggs wow wow that's insane 
The problem is the small plastic toy inside the Kinder Egg. While sold in many countries, this product is banned from the US because young children can choke on it. Now, some people have argued that these Kinder Eggs are not a risk to European children and Canadian children because European and Canadian children are smarter than US children. <laughs> Now, a few months after the CBP released that statement, a married couple from Seattle was detained at the Canadian border when the pair was caught with six Kinder Eggs from Vancouver. The couple was unaware that they were in possession of illegal ovarian contraband and was even more shocked that each egg carried a penalty of $2,500 per egg. God. Now, luckily for that couple, they were let off with a warning. But not to worry American Kinder fans, because in 2018, Ferrero introduced a modified Kinder Joy egg that complies with US regulations. Crucially, the Kinder Joy is not actually an egg-shaped chocolate. It's half a chocolate egg with wafer bits inside, while the toy is kept on the other side of the egg away from the edible bit, which I guess is suitable for hapless American children. And despite the fear surrounding Kinder Eggs, there's little evidence that these chocolate delights are as dangerous as claimed. Now, there have been seven reported child deaths between 1989 and 2016, a relatively tiny number in the face of billions of eggs sold. Oh my and furthermore, the packaging warns parents that the eggs are not suitable for kids under the age of three and supervision is recommended. Okay, so that many kids died and they're still allowing this product like even remodified like i'm not okay with that that is weird that's like lucky them i guess six deaths that's <laughs> Wow. But let's not leave food-based illegality, because while Americans remain deeply divided on a wide variety of issues, there's one thing that most of us can agree on, and that's that life begins at cheese. Now, over the last 40 years, our love of cheese, much like our waistbands, has grown. Between 1977 and 2020, we Americans have increased our annual cheese consumption from 16 pounds to 40 pounds every year. And wow. I'm probably responsible for about half of that. So needless to say, we Americans love our cheese, whether it's on pizza, burgers, or in the form of 64 Jesus-infused slices of American uh. cheese. Have you been up all night eating cheese? I think I'm blind. But if you're taking a cheese tour of the world, be careful what you bring back to the United States because your love of cheese might just put you in legal jeopardy. You guys oh enjoying Lord. that cheese? It's unpasteurized. It's illegal in this country. In fact, many raw soft cheeses from France like Blue de Jex, Roquefort, or uh, Reblochon are illegal in the United States due to the FDA's strict cheese production regulations. Under these rules, cheeses made with raw unpasteurized milk is illegal to import or sell in the United States unless it has been aged for at least 60 days. The Why? reasoning is, of course, food safety, namely to minimize the risk of foodborne contagions like listeria, salmonella, and E. coli. And after 60 days, the acids and salts in raw milk cheese, coupled with the aging process, begin to naturally kill these types of harmful bacteria. But here's the thing. Anyone who has ever been to France knows that the cheese is so, so much better there. Yeah. And it's not just raw cheese. The FDA has also cracked down on certain cheeses just because they contain too many live insects. That's the case with Kazu Martsu, a traditional uh, Sardinian sheep's milk cheese that's intentionally infested with live maggots. Kazu Martsu, which uh, literally means rotten cheese, gets its special flavor from being left to rot out among swarms of fly larvae. And while I'm told this hellish looking cheese is actually quite delicious, it turns out that eating maggots is actually a tremendous health risk, earning the cheese the nickname the world's most dangerous cheese. And as a result, Kazu Martsu is not only illegal in the US, but in the entire European Union. Okay. But here's the thing, anyone who has ever been to Sardinia knows the maggot filled and cheese is just that. so much better there. But the French have also been on the receiving end of big government's anti-bug-eating crusade. In 2013, the FDA angered American cheesophiles by blocking the import of French mimolette cheese just because the cheese is naturally infested with cheese mites. And while most cheesemakers consider the mites a nuisance, mimolette producers actually encourage the microscopic critters to burrow into the rind in order to help the cheese ripen and produce its distinctively sweet, earthy flavor. Mmm. So it's okay for some people, but not other people. I mean, I get it. If if you grow if you grew up eating it, then your your body's probably good. But oh man, I'm. I don't know if I should watch the rest of this. I I still do need to eat. Mighty. 
But the FDA has determined that eating too many mites could cause an allergic reaction, resulting in the ban of the Gouda-like cheese. And though the FDA has no legal limit on cheese mites, the agency indicated a target of no more than six mites per square inch, which Mimolet simply cannot meet. So what are the consequences of contraband cheese? We got a tip about some food entering the country illegally. No, 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 no. Well, the failure <laughs> to declare food products on your customs forms can result in fines of up to $10,000 and your unlawful cheese will be seized. But be forewarned, there is a thriving black market for cheese in the United States and illegal cheese is very much on the government's radar. The Department of Homeland Security, you know, the post 9-11 agency responsible for protecting the country from terrorism and kinder, kinder eggs, eggs, has helped bust cheese smuggling rings into Canada. But unless you're a large scale cheese smuggler, you're probably not looking at any jail time. Wow, this, you got me, good one. Making me think I was gonna like die in federal prison. And, ah, that's super funny, you scamps. So worst case scenario, you're probably looking at a fine and suffering the on way of eating your dry cheeseless crackers alone. But let's leave the food world and get into something that Thank probably you. makes a little bit more sense. Now, a source of pride for the baby boomer generation is that everything was dangerous and no one seemed to care. Yes, that golden era where we lined our walls with cancerous asbestos, medical professionals smoked in hospitals, and people sold chemistry sets to children that contained real uranium. So of course, as a society, we used to let kids hurl giant darts into the air with impunity and call it a national pastime. That's the story of lawn darts, which have been illegal in the United States since 1988 after being linked to thousands of injuries and the deaths of at least three children. Oh yeah? Lawn darts, known as javelin darts or jarts, was a popular lawn game in the mid 20th century. Gameplay was actually quite straightforward. Players would take turns tossing giant darts into a circle placed about 35 feet away, all a cornhole, but with giant razor sharp darts raining down from the sky instead of soft bean bags. Now, unfortunately, throwing a giant metal dart is a tremendous safety hazard and government regulators eventually began to take notice. This isn't child's play according to the Food and Drug Administration. The US's first attempt to outlaw the game was strenuously posed by jart manufacturers who fought the proposed FDA ban in court. In 1970, manufacturers actually won a compromise that would allow the sale of lawn darts so long as it was one, only marketed to adults, then two, the product was no longer sold in toy stores, and three, the product contained warning labels alerting consumers to keep it out of the reach of children. But unfortunately, these <sighs> compromise measures were insufficient to prevent tragedy for aerospace engineer David Snow. In April 1987, Snow's seven-year-old daughter, Michelle, was killed by a lawn dart thrown by one of her nine-year-old brother's playmates in the backyard of their home in Riverside, what? California. The dart hit her head with approximately 23,000 pounds of pressure per square inch, and Snow's daughter died three days later. The grieving father then made it his mission to lobby public officials to take lawn darts off the market for good. Right. Snow brought his complaint to the Consumer Product Safety Commission who were persuaded to investigate Snow's claims. The commission discovered that over a period of eight years, lawn darts had sent 6,100 people to the emergency room. 81% of those cases involved kids aged 15 or younger, Are half you serious? or 10 or younger, and many had suffered permanent injury, disability, or even death. What? In 1988, Snow prevailed in his crusade. The commission voted two to one to prohibit the sale of all lawn darts uh, and had them removed from stores in time for that year's Christmas. And Canada also outlawed lawn darts in July of 1989. Now, if you wanna play traditional lawn darts, you'll have to hop on a plane and visit the European Union where the game is still legal. And so we don't have lawn darts. I've never heard of lawn darts, but we have regular darts. And in fact, like, I think they're still every day in bars and stuff. Like, they'll have darts and pool. And so, yeah, that's wow. That's nuts. I can't even believe this. But here in the U.S., you can find a legal version uh, with a modified plastic blunt tip that replaces the sharp metal tip. Uh, Cause that makes uh, quite a lot more sense. But that takes us to something that's arguably even more dangerous, smoking. Now for most of the 20th century, cigarette smoking was glorified as the ultimate embodiment of the American West. Things like tough guys, rebels without a cause. In advertising, doctors endorsed their favorite brands while we were told that women found smoking men irresistible. But this image of health and sex appeal slowly began to change starting in 1964 after the US Surgeon General stated definitively that yes, smoking tobacco can be fatal. 
And research shows that flavored cigarettes largely appeal to and are disproportionately used by those under 18 years of age. That is not how to inhale, Bobby. You're hot boxing it. So to help combat youth smoking in 2009, the now it's 21. The FDA banned the sale of flavored cigarettes, including cloves, cinnamon, candy, and fruit flavors, pursuant to the Family Smoking Prevention and Control Act. Though menthol cigarettes were exempted from the ban, as well as non-cigarette tobacco products like electronic cigarettes, cigars, smokeless tobacco, and hookah. But the U.S. is not alone here, as countries with policies banning some or all types of flavored cigarettes include Canada, Brazil, Ethiopia, Uganda, Senegal, Niger, Mauritania, and 28 member states of the European Union, Moldova, Turkey, and Syria. Not us. As for everyone else? Well, not only are flavored cigarettes completely legal in the vast majority of countries, but the U.S. ban on cloves actually created an international incident. In April 2010, Indonesia, the world's top producer of clove cigarettes and the source of the vast majority of those smoked in the U.S., filed a trade dispute with the World Trade Organization. In its claim, Indonesia argued that the U.S. ban illegally discriminated against foreign products of flavored tobacco and created an unlawful advantage for domestic tobacco manufacturers. In September 2011, the WTO agreed, finding that the ban was indeed discriminatory because it prohibited clove cigarettes while allowing the sale of American menthol cigarettes. The opinion was affirmed on appeal in 2012. This ruling gave Indonesia the right to retaliate until either the U.S. changed its law to comply or the two sides reached a settlement. And in 2014, the two countries reached a final settlement on the issue, ending their dispute. Under the settlement, the U.S. agreed it would not arbitrarily discriminate against certain Indonesian tobacco products and promised to work with Indonesia on other trade issues. Okay. Now, a decade after the flavored tobacco ban, public health advocates seem to have been vindicated. A 2020 study published in the Journal of Adolescent Health found that the flavor ban was effective at reducing cigarette use among young people. In April of 2022, the FDA took additional steps against Against flavored tobacco products by proposing a ban on the sales of menthol cigarettes and all flavored cigars. In his proposal, the FDA argued that these actions had the potential to reduce disease and death by, quote, reducing youth experimentation and addiction and increasing the number of smokers that quit. Public comments will continue through July of 2022, but Kinder Surprise eggs are already banned, so the hard work has already been accomplished. But that takes us to the next American illegality, something you potentially might do every single day. <laughs> now, if you were an American pedestrian in 1903, crossing the street was a very simple endeavor. If you wanted to cross the street, you would just walk across the street. Before the introduction of cars, roads were seen as a public space that all citizens had a right to occupy, even children at play. But today, if you try and cross the street without using a crosswalk or cross the street when the traffic light is flashing, do not walk, well, congratulations, you have committed the crime of jaywalking. Now, across the pond, some of our European allies have taken a more laissez-faire attitude towards jaywalking by making it totally legal. They just call it walking. Yeah, that's usually what it's called. <laughs> I've, has anybody, does anybody know anybody that has been arrested for jaywalking? Because I haven't. I've always was told that it was, you can't do it, but I always do. And I've never been, I've never been in trouble for it ever. So, I don't know. Now, for example, there are no laws against jaywalking in Norway. The same goes for the UK, meaning that the Beatles didn't need to use the crosswalk for their famous Abbey Road cover. And Ooh. the Netherlands used to have laws against jaywalking, but repealed these statutes in 1995 to simplify the traffic code and give pedestrians more freedom. In these countries, your right to cross the street freely shall not be infringed. But here in the United States, we've taken a more punitive approach to walking. Now, every year, cities like Los Angeles issue tickets to tens of thousands of pedestrians for jaywalking, which includes fines uh, worth up to $200. But this was not always the case. In fact, ticketing someone for jaywalking is a relatively young concept in the United States. According to University of Virginia historian Peter Norton, the notion of jaywalking, with jay being an early 20th century slur for someone stupid or unsophisticated, was introduced by a group of auto industry aligned groups in the 1920s as part of a concerted pro-car anti-pedestrian propaganda campaign. But when cars were first introduced, there were a few crosswalks painted on the street. Pedestrians generally ignored the ones that existed because they didn't need to. But as cars became more widely available, pedestrian deaths skyrocketed, with hundreds of thousands of Americans, many children, being killed in car crashes for the first few decades of the 20th century. So to counter all this negative publicity, they shouldn't ever go off what America, like what America's doing. 
I don't know about this, guys. Auto Industries <laughs> sought to enact traffic laws that would shift blame from drivers and their cars to the pedestrians themselves. And it worked. Not only did cities and states begin criminalizing jaywalking, but the US government supported the anti-pedestrian propaganda campaign by ridiculing jaywalkers and placing blame on them for automobile crashes. And today, some criminal justice advocates believe jaywalking should be decriminalized altogether. But as an aside, you should all go watch Not Just Bikes, yeah, so that was the rest of that's the rest of that video. Um Yeah, so I don't know. All of those were really weird. I don't know. That's uh I'm going to put in the description anything that I think of cuz I've this whole video to me kind of silly like <clears throat> we got to pick or pick and choose our battles you know so yeah very interesting um let me know in the comments what you guys think or if you guys have any other uh illegal and legal things that you want to add to the list put it down into the description thanks for watching guys and i'll catch you in the next video bye